Hello, dumpsters and dumpstresses. I bring you a show, a tale so terrible that it'll put tracers, basers, and free art askers to shame. Now, what type of sinner may I be talking about here? Well, ladies and gentlemen, my dumpsters and dumpstresses galore, I bring you the most evil type of art sinner. I bring you the eraser. <laughs> Now I'm not talking about your classic dollar store pink eraser, no, no, no. I'm talking about someone who would deliberately go and scrub out someone's art, destroying it in the process. Now if you've clicked on this video and you've been interested in this story, I bring you this one of a kind story, unless it's already been told, I haven't seen it yet before. But I think this one is extra devious because it comes from a place of potential jealousy. Oh, that's right, I said the jelly word. Ooh, we're gonna get some peanut butter on that now. Oh boy. But no, I will tell you the tale from where it once began. And I was very lucky to be recording this whole time because yes, this was going to be a fun series video where I draw with my subscribers. So to the beginning, to get some background on this, I had seen a post by Pastaru, Pastaru, Pasta. So Pasta made a post. <laughs> Pasta. <coughs> Pasta made a post and I decided, oh my gosh. So it showed the URL of what the website was. It was Whiteboard Fox or something like that. And I was like, oh dang, that looks like a ton of fun. But I have tried this in the past before. My very first live stream that is no longer available for anyone to watch because it was an embarrassing nightmare. I wanted to set up a draw pile server. Now for anyone who doesn't know what draw pile is, <laughs> We're gonna leave that in here. Um, if you hear a lot of coughing, sniffling, and sneezing, I will edit out the sniffles, but the coughs, I think add a bit of memeiness. So hashtag pray for daddy in the comments. Uh, it's much appreciated. Thank you very much. <coughs> Back to the video. Draw pile is a communal drawing space. Basically you make a server and everyone can draw on it. However, this leads to issues. Problem number one being everyone has the exact same authority. And what I mean by authority is everyone can draw everywhere and on anything. There's no layer system, there's no claiming stuff as yours. That pen, once it touches the paper, it's free game. So good luck, Epic Gamers, because you're basically in a Fortnite battle and everyone's got like a purple gun. I don't play enough Fortnite and I've only heard my brother screaming enough about how people steal all the really nice guns. So I'm just gonna take a bet and say that the more legendary the gun is, the better you are at the game. This is a bad analogy. But basically, if you have the exact same power as everybody and anyone can erase, anyone can draw, that creates a problem because then if you get, oh, but I don't mean to spoil the tale yet, but like, get jealous and upset with someone? Or a more likely case scenario that happened the other seven times uh, is you accidentally hit the button or you thought it was the undo button, which that's okay, that's fine, but it was an accident, hopefully. The other problem that arises from this lovely whiteboard website is the fact that I can't tell who anyone is. That means I can't shift blame onto anyone <laughs> because I would totally shift blame on anyone for having a bad experience. But the thing is though, I can't tell who anyone who's drawing with me is. All I know is that they're probably a viewer of my content that came when I sent the link out on YouTube. The only way I probably could tell is through their art style or their handwriting. That's just all you need to know beforehand with this particular website. Now I had made a post on Instagram and then I had made a post on my community tab with the link and then I made a video. Just to make sure that everyone saw it so I would have people to draw with and it wouldn't just be me sitting alone in my room starting to get sick. <laughs> I'm sick and I wanted to have fun because otherwise I'd spread my infection to everyone who came and draw with me in a classroom. So you know what, this was the best thing for the community. Uh, whether it's the people that are actually physically around me that I'm trapped in my room with all my germs and that I can't spread my infection to the rest of the internet. So let's let's just say thank God for the internet. I, I can have my social abilities and still be sick. <laughs> 
So we're filming, we're having a jolly good time, everyone's drawing, and there's some really nice creativity going around, which I'm very happy about. I love drawing with people. I don't care what your skill level is. If you want to sit down and draw with me on one of these websites, I have a blast, and I think it's fun, because also you can hand write stuff, and sometimes it's better than typing for me because I just like handwriting. I think it's fun. I think it's cool. I thought the website was a good idea and it was a good idea until the incident occurred. My iPad had to update. <laughs> yes, at a crucial moment, I had to stop the recording and I had to update my iPad, which means I did not know what was happening for about 15 to 25 minutes. So I was out of there. People are still drawing because when I came back, the gods of art had come back to bless me. I was so ecstatic to see what had just occurred, what had just blossomed in front of my eyes. Oh my God. This amazing person named Gothica, I will post her links in the description because oh my God, I was blessed. I had never seen someone be able to pull off such beautiful artwork in such a rudimentary site. I need to learn from them. So of course I had asked, who goes there and where do your magical skills come from? Because I didn't know at the time. Because remember, I can't tell who drew anything. So I had to run down my head. I said, okay, there's like three people who I know. And this could be Sidonia, beautiful uh, lady as she is, fellow YouTuber in arms. This could have been Uncle, which is Uncle, if you've seen any of my past uh, bad content series, live streams, Uncle makes an appearance and Uncle is amazing. And then the third person was my friend Ren, who is a bit much bigger YouTuber than me. <laughs> and she's also fantastic at art, like so bloody amazing. And all three of them have very similarities where it's like a realistic rendering and blah, 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 blah. And they're friends and they would have known if I had posted something. I will also post everyone I mentioned down in the description, by the way. So I made a check bar like, is this you? And they made a third check bar saying, heck nah, B, this is Gothica. So go follow Miss Gothica. She, a blessing, a big old blessing. And they are a sweetie. But they had just finished their first piece. Now I want to add something here because uh, something came to mind during this whole situation just before I recorded this. I remember watching a video about a year ago. And it's great old Papa Jazza showing around his American YouTubers around the Aussie street sides. It was an event for VidCon Australia about a year ago, and one particular moment that stands out is they've gone to go see the street art, and Jazza brings up the piece that's by Banksy. It's easier if I just explain uh, after the video, so here's the full portion. How do you even know what's authentic? Uh, well, I think he came over to Melbourne in 2004 and painted a whole lot of stencils around the city. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of those stencils were painted over by the local council, who had no idea oh, of the no. work or the significance behind it. But I also like how uh, people are kind of interacted with this piece here. you got this uh, little drawing here, it's not like on a the parachute. Um, and down here is a little paste up of um, some rat sack or like uh, <laughs> rat pellets. Uh, this is kind of like interacting with that a little bit. Now, if you haven't noticed, Banksy's piece, that little stencil, has not been damaged. It's still there, and people, you know, interact with it. And that's what was happening here in our server. And that's what I like to call the heroic code of artists. Yeah, man, artists are totally like samurai warriors. Watashi wa artist death. Let me slay you with my pencil death. Oh my god. <laughs> But we all have a code. Basically, as artists, we understand how much effort and work goes into a piece that we draw and we treasure it. Even if we do see something from a place of jealousy, we would never touch someone else's art. Never in a million years. Even if we had access to a pen, a white paint bucket, we would never as artists go and paint over someone's piece with a malicious intent because we understand how much work goes into that. And then we bring up that people who were on the code of the council, people who weren't artists, who went and covered up Banksy's pieces. Those are people who don't understand how much art means to the artist, what the art means itself, how significant it is. I understand that it's vandalism, but it's artistic. It's still part of the culture that goes into the town. It's not done out of militia, it's done out of creativity. And that's what artists see. That is why there's a code that somehow exists. 
It's a general understanding of each other. It's probably one of the things that brings us so close together. That's why artists hold each other so close. When we're not trying to argue over each other's oopsies, <coughs> cough, take some lessons, uh, YouTube art community. <coughs> but if it's just a crappy little doodle on a whiteboard in your classroom or if it's on a piece of paper, no one's going to destroy that unless they don't understand what the meaning behind it is. And that's why people go to art galleries to see the meaning, even if they are an artist themselves. You go and see art, so you're not gonna tear down some piece off the wall just because, oh man, they're so much better than me. Like, I can't, I don't wanna look at this. I mean, heck, I go to award ceremonies for being a young artist because I am a young artist and because it's a competition, obviously I'm not gonna win every time and there's always gonna be someone who's younger and better than me. Am I gonna be a little bit jealous because of that? Cause I feel like an old hag when I look at their art? Of course, but that doesn't mean I don't appreciate them. I still love their artwork. I still think it's amazing and I would never want to destroy that. I would be like, yo, how'd you do that? I love your art. Cause I'm inspired by them. I want to keep pushing forward. I can do better. I want to be able to do better so I can win next time. <laughs> and that's what a lot of artists that are, you know, older. I'm talking about them grannies. You know them 17 year olds. Mm, damn, they gonna be in that retirement house for a long time. You know those 16 year olds? Yeah, they're about to retire. They're about to hand in their social security number. You know what? It's us elderlies that gotta put in the, the youths in place. What about that saying, what's up my fellow youths? Nah, 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 nah. It's what's up my fellow elders? Papa bless. And I say older because I have to make the assumption that it's because as someone who's older, you learn and you learn to control things better. And normally we blame a lot of things on children because they are not as developed as us. So that is why I'm going to make the assumption, and I'm going to say assumption, that this was a child. So after my good old artist friend, my B, my homie Gothica, my genius in arms, she starts working on her next masterpiece. But you wanna know, you know, she's working on it. You know, I ask her the question, everything's going smoothly, and then chaos ensues. to be kid takes out that eraser button and is like hell freaking nah and starts whacking off all of her lines they're just going left right scratching out everything going purposefully on her work he didn't scratch out anyone else's but hers he's just goes left right left right scratching all that crap out all of it's gone then they go to the next piece and they go left right left right scratching all of it out and both pieces are now obliterated they are gone they are far from ever seeing the light of day again. It's gone, it's done. But this kid is not done. You know what they do next? Oh no, they hit the nuke button. That's right, they slap that red old button real hard and they clear the entire board, messing up everybody's artwork. No one was happy that day, no one. I went pale and I was already pale from being sick and I was not happy and everything was gone. Quick enragement was, oh, that's what happens when I try to uh, verbally swear on this channel. YouTube physically censors me. 
Christ, the YouTube's infected me. I gotta stay. <laughs> <laughs> family friendly meme content over here guys now going back to problem number two due to the problem of anonymity on this website the fact that I can't tell who did what that means I cannot tell you who did this I have no clue unless they want to come forth and apologize in the comments but otherwise I have no idea who did it the only thing I can know for sure is that they are definitely a viewer of my content that's the only thing I can tell you I cannot 100% guarantee that I know that they are a child. I have to make the assumption that they are a younger viewer and who was jealous based on the actions that they did. I do not know who this person is. I just need to state that. I understand that sometimes we like to, you know, vandalize each other's art a little bit. You saw me doing that, but I would always undo. I would never erase it. It was just a funny haha. Now this is where I go nut nut bananas on people like this. I, I can't stand people who would go out of their way to destroy other people's artwork. I can understand stealing it. I can see the mindset. Do, do I support it? God, no. But I can see the mindset of wanting to claim someone's art that's yours so you feel the satisfaction of being praised. But there's no, there's no praise in this. There's no, it's not like you're tracing. It's not like you're stealing. You're destroying someone's art so that if you can't have that, no one can. There's no positivity in that anywhere not to say that any form of those things have any positivity what I mean by positivity is there's no positive reward in any way shape or form you're not gonna get compliments you're not gonna trick anybody you're not getting any money out of it you're not deceiving anyone you're just destroying the artist and you're destroying yourself there's no winning in a situation like that it's completely lose-lose and it's probably one of the most hurtful mindsets anyone can have and my advice for anyone who has this bloody destructive mindset that's horrible for everyone around you is is to do yourself a favor and step away step away from the social media step away from the paper step away from everything and just give yourself time to breathe and then step towards practicing and drawing on your own time don't look at other people just Keep practicing until you feel more confident in your skills because otherwise you're gonna keep having the same extreme reaction. So take your chill pill, dude, and go study in the corner. It's not like you're alone in this thought process. Everyone gets jealous, but you just need to be able to step back and not react so badly. That's the whole thing you need to avoid. You don't want to act on the reaction. You can think it in your head, but it's a bubble thought. It is a bubble thought and you do not let that bubble thought pop or leave your brain. As Elsa would say, you let it go. <laughs> and it's not like I don't understand the concept of jealousy. Hell no, I can be a PB and J sandwich all the freaking time looking at all these amazing artists at Instagram, especially when they put their freaking age in the title, like, oh, I'm 15, I drew this. I'm like, excuse me? Like, of course I'm gonna be like a little bit jealous and that little demon says, in the back of my head is gonna say to me, you should have practiced more, you should have done better. You know, like, you're never gonna be as good at them in a million years, but you know what? I keep sitting my butt down and practicing and I keep working on my stuff and I keep trying to present it to people to be like, hey, could I do better? What can I do better? How can I speed up that process? How do I do better in a better amount of time? How do I become like these people? And that is the mindset you should have, you should be, wanting to improve yourself, not being wanting to take other people down. That's what I have to say about that. That's my PSA, that's my freaking TED talk again. Does every video I need to have for like the past six videos need a TED talk? I swear to bejeebus. Oh yeah, by the way, if you're interested in what Gothica has to say about this, let her rip, lady. Hey, it's your girl Gothica413 and here to release an official statement over the whiteboard incident that happened a couple days ago. I was wrong and I was hurt and I was silenced. It was very crushing to, to know that there are people out there that will erase your art. The hard work you've done, they'll just take it away from you. I joined a, a really great YouTuber's little live drawing thing. Oh my God, how dare you call my live stream little. I swear to God, it was the biggest thing next to Jake Paul. Something like that, and I, I think I drew a character, Pico from Boku no Pico or something like that. And someone came out of nowhere after after I was done drawing it, and they started scribbling over it, and then they erased it. And the way I responded, like any other human being would respond, I said, Let me serve your bitch lasagna. Bitch lasagna, bitch lasagna. They didn't like that. 
They didn't like that at all. They erased the entire board. Everyone's work was gone. And I just have one thing this to ask. Why did you do it? Why did you crush my dreams? Why did you hurt me like this? Like, honestly, you can catch me outside. I know I made me 5'2", weak and small, you know, but I have feelings and you could pr you could probably hurt me. You could probably beat me up. Um, but on a serious note, you shouldn't you shouldn't like erase people's drawings if you're jealous or whatever. I don't know why you did it, but honestly, it was stupid and immature and you you lucky it was anonymous because we wouldn't like you. I wouldn't like you. No one likes that kind of behavior. It's very just immature and you should probably apologize. Yeah, you should apologize to me and then and tell me I'm great. <laughs> On a serious note, not cool. I'm not too mad about it, to be honest. I'm not too upset. I mean, it was annoying because I, I didn't get to save it. I didn't get to do anything with it. I actually really liked the way it was coming out. But since I'm a very skilled artist, I'm pretty sure I can make it again. Because you're not going to stop me from drawing, buddy. I'll tell you that. Um, well, that was a message for me in my response. Not that... It, I'm not really good at talking. It's not my thing. A little unscripted here and there. But here you go. And... Back to the video that's probably playing before I started talking. <laughs> I rate this formal statement 10 out of 10. Would want this statement again. Okay, continuing on with the video, just as Miss Gothica said. <laughs> I've gone like 15 minutes without coughing and everything is pouring out of me. Again, hashtag pray for daddy in the comments. I'm trying my best here, guys. I'm still sick, I still have the flu, and I appreciate every single one of you for listening to this video and feeling the need to be like, hey, I like you. And if this video comes out and I've already hit 2K, thank you for the 2,000 of you that appreciate me enough to be like, yo, I'm gonna drop a subscribe on that. Thank you. Now, excuse me, I need to go sit in my freaking bed because I'm tired and I'm sick and I have a headache and I'm still dying. Hashtag pray for daddy. This is Witchit signing out. Bye-bye.